There's a lot going on, I just don't know where to start. Let's start off with this surface of the moon. First of all, the technique that I've applied recently with this light is to get the structures that have not many details apparent to be able to see them, and these bring them straight out. And uh, another thing, it's not that I'm going to change the way I edit my work. Uh, a couple of you maybe said, oh, I don't like the light so much. It's, it's an editing tool. It's the way to edit the surface. What you're looking at right now will never be seen by anybody unless this technique or another one is applied. I know it. Why? Because I looked and no one has these. It's in little crevices. The size I've zoomed it up for you all is humongous. So people are saying, come on, show us where it is. It's a spot. I'd show you where it is, you wouldn't even be able to see it with a telescope. You'd probably have to zoom in even further unless you have a really damn close telescope with very high um, uh, millimeters, uh, over 2,000 millimeters for sure, because with my 1,500, I can't see it. I can see the spot where it is, but I can't see the exact um, whole area this wide. I have to zoom in using magnifying lenses, etc. Again, this area near Aristarchus, uh, sorry, Archimedes crater. It's basically right at the edge. You can see these objects, symmetrical lines. Look at the square rectangle there, and there's spots inside. Those little spots, supposed spots that you're seeing, are objects that are in unison, in line, possibly put there. It's... See the blue part, the bottom part here where you see the blue, that is even darker. It can't be seen, but these structures all come out. And it's a very good way to be able to see them, the outline. The structures are brighter, and uh, where there's certain pipes like these yellow come out, uh, they also came out in two or three other videos when they're pipes, they're like gold color. I'm, I'm seeing... Um, how can I say? By using this process with the light, I'm able to see repetitive colors coming back, the same colors, the same forms and shapes of these pipes and structures, tunnels, platformed, outlines, structures, whatever you want them to be, they are not natural. And you can clearly see this surface is not natural. before post-processing that triangle I found I think it's a pyramid type shape and this is look on each side you see the communicating to the edge uh, outer edge of the crater on both sides we can't see that unless we app, apply this light technique again at the back here outer limits of the moon here always on the outer limits it's oh guys on the left of Clavius Crater, see that flat surface there, top left? That's the city I've been posting. It's part of it. It has symmetrical structuring, and this large piece is being held up by humongous beams that I've posted in videos. They're humongous columns holding this um, whatever structure up. Looks like a flat surface, and once you zoom in, it is nowhere flat. Very green surface, I'll tell you that. Once post-processed, look at these little tent-like, and they're, they're, they are not little at all, but on this photo they are. Top center of the photo. And then structures go towards the back. So many greens here. A further view of it without zooming in or anything, just a still shot in high dynamic range again, brings out a lot of the structures. High, HDR does not like darkness, does not like dark photos. It's usually not good with dark photos. Here, just a color photo, post-processed, beautiful. 
this is where we, we have to go. You see Aristarchus on the left, sinus iridum, the apple bite, center of the photo. Now let's take the light out of the photo and see where there's an emanating light the most. You see all these little specks, but of course at the top, back those humongous Flintstone-like structures that are supposed to be inverted and we're only supposed to be seeing them because uh, it's an optical illusion of the eye because of the oscillation and uneven rotation of the moon. <sighs> that was one heck of an explanation. I applaud the guy that found that one out. But it, maybe it's right. Maybe it is. I don't know. I just, I'm seeing these humongous mountain like boulders. Um, are they inverted? Convex? Are they, are they out? Are they uh, out? Outwards, inwards, I don't know. Sinus iridum, the top left there, you can see that again, apple bite. Look at the structures in the photo as we zoom up here on sinus iridum. This exact photo is how I made my sinus iridum video of the structures and you could see that the mountains look very square which of course people immediately jump the, to the conclusion assuming that they are pixels and they are not a shot of sinus iridum the ridge line there is where the city is let's zoom into this crater dead center we're going to zoom up real close, and then I'm going to show you what's there. This is the crater. This is what's around the crater. This is what's at the back of sinus iridum. No secret, no hidden areas. It's straightforward, straight up. I'm telling everyone, it's not something that's hard to find. If you apply yourself, well, I guess it is hard because it took me a while but it's possible. Beetlejuice. Why am I posting these, my friends? Because um, the video I posted of Beetlejuice, there were some very nice photos there, but I didn't um, post them in the video because I didn't have time to add them. They weren't edited yet. So here's a look at four or five shots of them. And you could also see what's around Beetlejuice. I mean, there's so much movement. In 10, 15 photos, there's not one uh, speck or star, if you want, or object, little white light behind Beetlejuice that's in, a, in one place. I mean, I can only imagine how much wind would be beside Beetlejuice. Hey, we're talking about something that's excessively, excessively massive, more massive than our sun and our solar system. Beetlejuice is expanding and it's going to explode in about a million years. It's humongous. So here again, another view of it. But we're going to go look at a different view, guys, of Beetlejuice. Um, because we can't see, we can only see a little bit that sphere inside exactly Beetlejuice. You know, so we're going to look at it this way. First of all, with the magnifying lens to get a view. But then we're going to uh, turn over to a, a very different view to be able to see the heat emanating, the flaring on the surface, the gases that are on the surface of Betelgeuse. And here we are. Beautiful picture. We'll see as we're zooming up here. Look at the massive fire around Betelgeuse. This is, can you imagine the distance of it? The distance around it is almost as big as Betelgeuse itself. This is pretty humongous. Here, a view of the surface. So whatever is happening, there's a lot going on on the surface. We're looking at massive, massive fire, gases. And I imagine these, this sun, star, Betelgeuse flaring, would create an enormous stellar wind in the surrounding vicinity atmosphere of it. 
channel contributors. We had a problem with the FundMe page yesterday. I'll tell you all about it. First of all, John Douglas, $1,100. And he had, he paid 69 more than that too. It cost him a total of 1169 He donated that to my fund raising campaign page. And John, I thank you very much. Crazy Penguin, Paul. The 10 and the 14 grade, brand new glass. The 14's on the way. He's fixing it up for us to be able to view the sun. And thanks to Paul, I was able to view the sun and find that celestial object on the left side of it. Had a lot of problems with the page, the Fund Me page. Had to, this video was de deleted for some reason. I redid it, but hey, I'm back there. Guys, thanks for the support. I'll have the link up for that uh, fund raising campaign. Bruce's Big Telescope. Uh, goal to show it all. I kept the same name. Thanks everyone. And I'm sorry again for those who had problems yesterday for some reason with the fund me page.